Because while switching, no, it will be, it will be visible on this thing. Why switching? It will be visible on the OBS. How? Because while switching, it will be visible on the OBS. How? Well, well, it will be selecting that scene, no? If you select poster, we will be changing that scene. So while we select that scene, that scene will come over the online. Are the audio starting? Okay, let it be. Let it be now. Okay, go. Go ahead, sir. Now you're ready, no? Good morning everyone. Welcome to the first session of day 3, 5 days online IST approved faculty development program Odyssey Trends and RFI Microelectronics organized by Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Don Bosco College of Engineering Goa and Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering National Institute of Technology, Goa. Technically sponsored by IEEE Bombay Section, WIE Affinity Group. In a typical system on chip, analog and RF front end exist along with the digital circuit and integrated to consume power efficiently. Unlike digital design, where the trade-off is mainly on two parameters such as speed and power, the analog design has multi-dimensional design trade-offs. Tuning to these trade-offs is challenging at low voltage. This poses a huge demand for low voltage analog circuit design in standard digital CMOS technology. Our topic for today's session is design of GMC based low power continuous time filter. Our resource person for today is Dr. Vasantha M.H. Dr. Vasantha M.H. has completed his B.Tech from Mangalore University and received the Masters of Engineering in Electronics and Communication from IIT Madras and Doctor of Philosophy from the Department of Electronics and Communication from NIT Suratkal. He is at present serving as Associate Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering NIT Goa. He has served as the head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, NIT Goa, from 2015 to 2018. His research interests are on low voltage microelectronics, low power analog and digital circuits, continuous time filter circuits, system on chip, fault tolerant, and network on chips and embedded systems. We welcome you, sir. I request, sir, to take over the session. Good morning, friends. So today, in this webinar, I will try to give some glances on low power integrated continuous time conductance, transconductance, capacitor filters designed to be operated at low supply voltage. So first of all, I should uh, acknowledge uh, my gratitude to my, my guide, Dr. Lakshmi Nidhi T, Professor, Department of PC NIT K. Suratkal, and my colleagues, Dr. Nitin Kumar, YB, and Dr. Anir Bansi, and also my MTech and PhD students and BTech students. So, who are uh, all part of this, my today's presentation. So, content of my today's uh, presentation will be first regarding technology scaling, then why we have to concentrate on low voltage, then effect of voltage scaling on analog circuit design domain, then classification of filters, and then OTAC filter and detail some of the blocks, basic blocks of the OTAC filter. And there are two case studies. Uh, one is a design of fourth order GMC based low pass filter, which is designed for one megahertz and where completely 
designed and then fabricated and realized on physical and that is silicon and then tested and results is presented and the second case study is um, design of again OTAC filter for uh, low uh, signal that is ECG detection again which is uh, this design and then the results are published. So if you are aware I think uh, regarding the roadmap the technology roadmap which we call it as ITRS uh, semiconductor roadmap. So as we know the technology goes on reduces with the increase uh, whatever the uh, increase in the year and as per Murray's law and uh, at 2020 we are now here and if you can see that is already gone to less than 5 nanometer. So when you reduce this technology so working with the same design is not possible you should find some alternate solution either through circuit design or through technology that is from the device uh, level or from the technology level or from circuit uh, solution level. So in this case uh, we are just presenting you one of the solution where it is mainly uh, based on the circuit design where we can save time as well as save money that means the cost which is involved for going for new technology can be reduced. So if you see uh, as your technology reduces the another important factor is uh, the supply voltage. So as you reduce the technology with respect to uh, the whatever the year or whatever the time. So you can see that uh, the supply voltage also reduces but both are not reducing at the same factor. So you have a gate length reducing in one uh, and threshold voltage if you see it is reducing very different ways. So this is supply voltage and your gate length uh, is reducing in different ways. So threshold voltage is not reducing at the same rate at uh, your supply voltage. So what happens is uh, unfortunately that VGS minus VTH what we say is a gate drive which goes on reduces with respect to the supply voltage reduces. So we need a solution to find the way where we can tackle this solution. So there are various uh, methods in literature it is available. So there are uh, we can use those uh, different uh, circuit design solution or technology solution. Now when you come to low voltage why exactly the low voltage is um, we are referring. Now as you know in an SOC nowadays it is uh, we also call embedded system where you have analog as well as digital circuits are embedded together with some kind of uh, isolations shieldings. Now one of the important thing is uh, the cooling requirement since the surface is reduced your uh, cooling that is heat dissipated in the system has to be reduced. So cooling reduce the cooling requirement and then faster processing, processing speed because that speed of the processor we need to be increased that is other way we are bringing the technology to be reduced. Then smaller packaging we want size to be miniature and with the miniature size the functionality to be more. Then another important factor is uh, all the device nowadays we wanted is battery operated because we want portable devices. So when you say battery operated the power dissipation should be less. Then rate of growth in battery technology is slow. If you compare the technology growth the battery growth is very slow. So you need to find a way to uh, store the power or in terms of other way you can say reduce the power dissipation. Then coming to the low voltage that means you can always use some alternate methods of supply voltage. So one way is use low supply voltage and where we can connect these strings to solar power fuel cells and other kind of alternate energy sources. Then another thing is the digital that is if you see the digital era the power dissipation will be depends on the square of the supply voltage. So if you are able to reduce the supply voltage then power dissipation also reduces. So in, in a way we can always reduce the power dissipation 
so that is uh, our aim of bringing the low voltage will always help to make our system more efficient now when you when you say analog circuits so maximum 80 to 90 percent of the linear processing linear signal processing what we do is a filtering so that is um, whether it is uh, any kind of signal you tackle you are doing it the filtering then amplification then perform other mathematical operation and analog signals so by looking at these things so it is very important that um, uh, we should understand that we are targeting for low voltage and then the analog circuits working at low voltage the challenges are huge now when you say low voltage effect of voltage scaling on analog circuit domain as i shown so if you see the issues at low voltage is a vth which is does not scale at the same proportion so there are different uh, solution or you can say different methods we can tackle in a literature so there are uh, three of such of them is one nanotechnology or low or zero vth that means we can go for newer technology where you can say that there is a very minimum VTH is required or you can also say zero VTH. Now question is increases the cost per chip and market turnover time because you are going for new technology cost increases and market turnover time. Then you have to address this challenges that is short channel effects, channel and modulation, drain induced barrier, tunneling etc. needs to be addressed. that means you are short channel effects what are the effect how oh, those need to be addressed and modeled very accurately then another thing is another solution is sub threshold operation of the device that means you can operate that whatever the mosfet or device which you are using uh, in a sub threshold operation that means below vth so then question comes you required accurate model of sub threshold of the device then also the junction leakage current which are very small because you are already dealing with the small current these leakage currents are becomes comparable so then the frequency response of this sub threshold and then linearity of the device which is going to be very poor now one option is we can explore always is a bulk driven transistor so this is basically you will be giving the input instead of giving to the gate we are giving input to the bulk so what we call it as a bulk driven transistor which can be explored as one of the ways to tackle this, this uh, challenges now when you say that any of the solution it is in analog circuit it is al always a multi-dimensional optimization problem means any circuit you design which needs all of these parameters at the same time you need to look into some of the parameter which will be having the advantage and at, at the same time you should uh, trade off with other some of the parameters so we say that normally nothing comes free so if i say that you are dealing with the supply voltage you start with so you are reducing supply voltage means swing reduces and that also affects the speed and then input output impedance and this also in terms of diagonally that is as if i am reduced for speed then my power dissipation also going to be matters and noise in the linearity so that means it is a diagonally as well as the connected with the chain that is we call it as a optimization problem so we have to address each one of the parameter and looking at the particular applications we can always uh, have trade off of some of the parameters over the others now when you come into classification of filters so in this we are mainly targeting about the filter so you have a digital filters where both time and amplitude are quantized and analog filters we say that time may be continuous or discrete the amplitude is always continuous so this examples of continuous time and continuous amplitude are active RC filters or GMC filters. So basically this uses some active elements along with the uh, passive components that is R and C. So GM also a, an active element which will be used to get the op-amp equivalent 
uh, characteristics. Then you have a discrete time and continuous amplifier filters, switch capacitor filters, switch current filters. So these are the other type of filters which is already, which is used for different frequency ranges. Then also you have a digital filters which are needed for the complex circuit and then you have a data converter. So when you say continuous time analog filters, we are very fast, but the basic thing is they are not linear and the accuracy is very less, means you need to compromise with respect to the accuracy. And the variation due to supply voltage or any of the other um, surrounding, like we say PVT, process, voltage, and temperature variations are going to be more. So accordingly, we need a, some alternate additional circuits to take care of this. Whereas this may not be there in the digital circuits. And then you have a discrete time and continuous amplifier filters are linear and accurate, but they are very slow because you are processing in a bulk. Now to just discrete, that means to have a ranges of different frequencies, so we have a discrete active RC filter, which is normally designed for one to 100 megahertz. Then on-chip continuous time active filters, which can go to 10 hertz to one giga. When I'm saying continuous time active, it is either uh, uh, op-amp based RC filter or it is a GMC filter. Then you have a switch capacitor or switch current filter, which is a discrete time, which is one hertz to 10 megahertz. And then discrete LC component, which is 10 hertz to 1 gigahertz and then distributed which is for 100 megahertz to 100 gigahertz now when you go for these kind of filters in the design in a chip so it is very important that what is the accuracy because all these are nothing but uh, the uh, transfer characteristic or you can as frequency response now when you say that this filters design how exactly the accuracy matters because the whatever the frequency or bandwidth it is depends on all these parameters of r and c time constants so the absolute accuracy on chip analog component is pure it is very poor so it will be around 10 percent to 50 percent so when i'm saying absolute it is nothing but the variation independent that is independent of each parameter that is let us say resistance so how much resistance only varies or capacitance or any other GM. So instead of that, if you go for matching accuracy, that is you go for ratios of variation, that is R1 by R2, like you do that op-amp, we have a gain which is depends on R1 by R2 or, so what happens there, the whatever the variation will be mutually cancels and you have a accuracy going to be more. So you see that in the discrete components these variations will be five percent whereas in the uh, this uh, on chip components it will be uh, going to be a little bit more uh, so that is why we need to take care of this so that is why we always go for matching accuracy whereas in untuned analog integrated circuits that means on chip r's that is resistance are built using chip can be matched to each other typically with a few percentage. As I said, different R's can be matched and CS uh, capacitance also can be matched with a careful label. That means you are trying to see that mutually capacitance are getting cancelled. They are existing, but mutually it sees different, uh, mutually sees the signal, see the capacitance equally. Then the transconductance, that is GM stage of, can be matched to about 10 to 30%. So if you see, so R and C components can be very less if you try to match, whereas the GM is going to be a little bit variation is more. So it is important to reduce this to within 10%. And in an active filter, the time constant TC determined RC determined by RC product accurate to only 20 to 50%. So the variation in case of um, uh, active filter, that is active RC filter, this is mainly op-amp based filter it is going to be more, whereas in GMC filter, also an inaccurate tuning may be used. That means you can always uh, see and GM. So GM, I can have a variation. That is, I can tune it by just adjusting the current. So that is why the variation in a PAM based RC filter is going to be more, whereas in this case, less. 
So in another type of filter, which is a switched capacitor filter, where your time constant depends on the uh, ratio of capacitance and the switching frequency, where the uh, switching frequency TC accuracy may be very 0.05 percent, <coughs> or it can be better. Now, if you just compare this uh, in a different ways of designing filter, there are normally three basic approaches we use. Uh, one is using simple filters, that is simple op-amp based filter, like silent key filter, two Thomas filter, which are simple op-amp based filters, which is for normally for less frequency. Then when the requirement is becomes more stringent and uh, the higher frequency, then we go for and the attenuation going to be more, requirement is going to be more. So we require to have a cascade design. That means we need to connect, we need to design higher order filter, maybe fourth order, sixth order. So we go for cascade design where individually we'll split the transfer function. Either if it is uh, you want third order means second order and first order, fourth order means two second order. So basically we make an standalone second order filter or first order filter, which can be go on connect, go on connected in cascade. So the advantage of this kind of design is very simple and it is implementation is easy and sensitivity or medium and the noise are also going to be less because you are taking care of all the things individually. Then the third is multi-feedback that is basically this is you are using simulated reactance filter that is you are Capac uh, inductance you are going to have realized using some of the methods of capacitance so and capacitance and GM so then you are going to have a higher uh, the feedbacks so the feedback loop has to be designed very carefully so in this case design becomes more complex and the structure also becomes more and you have a lower noise and sensitivity hard to lay out and deeper that means when you do the layout you have to be very very careful taking each and every things. Now, when you say evaluation, that is whatever GMC filter, or we can say GM nothing but OTA, operational transconductance amplifier. So it has started in 1969, and after that, it has not taken much development. But in 1985, there are a lot of uh, work has been done by uh, continuous time filter by Sanchesa. So then it has taken into very different angle and then today you can see that this OTAC filter it will be applicable for low frequency as well as for high frequency. The advantage, biggest advantage of this uh, GMC filter or OTAC based filter is you can have a tuning that means you can vary the current and then you can vary the transconductance thereby you can vary the, the frequency range you want to be uh, filtered. So that will be an kind of on chip tuning. We can easily do it, which may not be possible in case of op amp. So if you see, I can uh, the application of this OTAC filter, I can use for low frequency. So it is less than 100 Hertz, as well as I can go from one megahertz to in terms of 10 gigahertz. So that means, I can have higher range of frequencies filtered to be used using GMC based and as well as lower. So this makes uh, your GMC filter good candidate for the design of uh, filters where you can just vary the uh, GM that is transconductance by changing the current that is normally by bias current and you can get the frequency tuning as well as adjust them frequency response. Now this GMC filter mainly has a different kind as I said it is a tunable continuous time filter and it has a faster than RC filter since they use open loop. That means in case of op amp even though it has a high gain so you will have a uh, made it as a finite gain using feedback loop so that it, the moment it is feedback the system becomes slow and that is whereas in case of uh, uh, your GMC filter you are using in open loop so your uh, circuit is going to be faster and you have a lower power since the active blocks drive only capacitive load. 
means normally you, you can realize the uh, resistance part using gm cell so that we'll see later on and uh, since there is no resistance so that heat is less so there will be lower power dissipation and more difficult only the one of the major issue is a, a linear operation that means since there is a no feedback so the range for which it operates that is what we call it as a linear range is going to be lesser compared to your active rc filter so that is just i am putting again here so operated in open loop condition then high frequency of operation is possible then poor linearity range so when i am saying poor linearity range you will be having the range of input voltage which need to be applied becomes limited so that depends on the how small your signal is so since you have some other advantage you can always um, uh, compromise on one of the parameter which is going to be the linearity and there are some circuits which can used to improve the linearity which is a part of circuit solution now a simple basic OTA block you can look here it will be looking like this so a basic OTA block and realization so uh, a OTA which is normally of this symbol or you can say GM cell so this is like if, if you cutting this op amp the front portion you'll get this so meaning is you have an input which is going to be the voltage which is similar to op amp whereas output it is going to be the current so this current if i put it in the buffer that means you have a op amp triangle so i am going to get the voltage if i am cutting this then i will only the output is current so in the moment when i am saying output is current the output whatever output is seen at the terminal is going to be large so you have an input resistance also going to be large and output resistance seen at the output node is going to be large so whereas in op amp it is the output resistance is going to be very small or you say ideally zero and input resistance is going to be infinite and the gain in op amp is going to be large we need an infinite gain whereas in gm you here in OTA we can have very large GM so that we need to be current to be large so by adjusting this current I can have GM to be adjusted so accordingly I can have my output current which is going to be the difference of uh, voltage at the input side multiplied by GM so a small signal equivalent circuit of GM cell will be something like this so you have Two input signal and input res both of this input uh, resistance will be infinite and you have a output current and i naught is nothing but gm into v plus minus that is difference between the input voltage so if you ground this then it is going to be single ended gm cell now in a simple way i can use this gm cell to realize either resistance or any of the other circuit so one of the voltage amplifier you can see as a simple used as a uh, simple gm cell so we have an input let us say v1 and you have ibc same current and output what we are saying is v0 here output voltage we are converting this i0 current flows into rl and then you will get uh, output voltage which is v0 which is equal to i0 into rl so i0 is nothing but your gm into v plus so you will get gm into vi so v0 by vi is nothing but gm into rl so now in this case the current will be input voltage is minus so you'll have a current flowing in this so it is going to be minus gm into rl so similarly i can have the non-inverting so where it is uh, input is given to the positive in uh, terminal of the gm cell and then your output going to be the positive so in the both the cases if you measure the output volt output resistance it is going to be at the v not seen from here it is going to be rl because as i said the output resistance seen from here it is going to be infinite so these two in parallel so it is the lowest so rl and in this case also it is rl so i can convert your gm cell into an voltage amplifier using simple resistance which is going to be the requirement for the voltage amplifier so I, a simple gm cell will be like this now same thing i can use this gm cell for a feedback amplifier so i can use the gm with respect to an op amp so which can be used as a feedback so you have 
v0 equal to v1 equal to minus gm into rl so it is going to be the same v0 into vi so you have a output impedance going to be zero that is whatever output impedance seen at the out, uh, op amp node is very very small so you are making it as output impedance zero so similarly here so i can use a simple feedback so output impedance is going to be the gm into minus gain is going to be gm rl is going to be zero so similarly a non-inverting feedback amplifier so you can use as, as like a simple amplifier but what is required is gm to be considered to be large so accordingly i can calculate z and z so you can for further reference for these kind of simple circuits uh, refer this uh, uh, paper that is active filter design using operational uh, gmc filter by randall giger Ijer, sanchez which are very popular in 1965 so you can refer this it's available in IEEE so there are two so many circuits similar to this now again in the same way I can have impedance realized so which is nothing but a realization of the paste and circuit so a simple uh, GM cell I can use here V1 then output is given to short with the negative to positive so this is nothing but kind of uh, negative feedback circuit so if you calculate with respect to input and output whatever the gain so it will be minus gm1 by gm2 so if you see here it will be current here it will be going to be gm1 into vi so it is minus and then that current will be flowing it cannot flow here it has to be flow here so that current flowing here it will be going to be whatever the voltage here multiply by the gm2 that is gm2 into this voltage which will be the current so accordingly if you do this so gm2 at uh, whatever v0 by vi will be gm1 by gm2 and if you calculate the output impedance this will be 1 by gm2 so 1 by gm2 is nothing but if you see here it will be a resistance gm is a transconduct so i can have a simple resistance which is using this kind of configuration so if you calculate here also the input impedance with respect to this terminal so exactly this part is if you take here so input impedance at this node which is nothing but a 1 by gm which is nothing but resistor so i can implement a controlled resistor resistance which is nothing but using 1 by gm so if i vary this gm the resistance can be varied so a simple resistance can be realized using gm so which is not possible in case of uh, active rc filter so whenever the resistance is now it is based on uh, based on the active element so your power dissipation also going to be reduced is yes. now coming to the basic cell of a filter is nothing but your integrator so now as the output is current the moment i make this output current to pump uh, to this capacitance so it will be going to be charged in a slope that means it will start charging and what you get is a ramp so the voltage is going to be increased so then accordingly you, you can see this so when i'm having this v1 and v2 volt uh, the applied voltage and the whatever current flowing will be gm into vi1 minus vi2 so which will be the current and the impedance whatever here seen is converted into um, s domain which will be 1 by sc so i can calculate the gm into v1 minus vi2 current multiply by 1 by sc so you get v1 out by v1 minus vi2 which is nothing but output by input which is nothing but gm by sc which is nothing but an ideal integrator so if your uh, sc that is frequency zero that is for dc this is going to be output is going to be uh, v naught that means this is an open circuit so whatever your current high is seen as input resistance uh, output whatever resistance seen here will be infinite so what is going to get is a uh, the maximum voltage that means it is a like a the pump, pumping a current for the high, no, high output node so accordingly you will be having large so which is nothing but a lossy integrator uh, sorry simple integrator now if i want to have that means if you uh, do this then it will be kind of transfer function at the output at zero frequency is going to be infinite then you can make this as a lossy integrator where you connect a small resistance and if you calculate the transfer function which is nothing but gmr divided by src plus one so here it is 
your pool is located at 1 by RC. So, if, and GMO, that is what you get is a DC gain. So, whenever S is 0, that means in frequency or you can say DC. So, what you get is a uh, GMR, which is a gain. So, and after that, it will remain constant for low frequency. As the frequency increases, you get a uh, uh, response which is going to be attenuated with a single pole, that is minus uh, 20 dB per decade. So, the pole location will be 1 by RC. So, what we can see is here, as this P depends on R1 by RC. So, if at this moment, whatever C and R, this R is external, whereas the whatever R seen here, it is going to be infinite. So, this will be the dominating factor. So, if I connect C very small, normally in, the, uh, in a chip, on chip, it is 1 to 10 picofarad. Accordingly, this R will be the deciding factor. So, what you connect R will be deciding the pole location. So, if you have a parasitic resistance very less, so what you get the location of pole is going to be RNC will be small means you will get very large frequency. So, you will you can have a filter design for this range of frequency. So, if I connect this C very small, so again I can have a very, uh, my dominant pole can be very far. So, I can easily design high frequency filter with again whatever the required uh, location of the pole. Now, similarly, I can connect now R0, instead of having R0, I can connect another GM. That means what you have seen in the previous slide, you have a, this is nothing but a resistance. So, I can connect a GM, which will be seen as a resistance. So, I can directly replace, instead of having R additional resistance, which is in one chip is difficult to design. So, I will go for another GM cell, which can be same or can be different. So, which will be having the response like this. Now, if you see a simple integrator here, I just, uh, so R in input impedance is infinite, output impedance also infinite. What you connect is a C and a simple transfer function, if you calculate here, V naught equal to I naught by C1. So, whatever voltage here is nothing but current multiplied by the impedance. So, then I naught is nothing but GM into VI. So, accordingly, VI will be the input voltage and this gm by c1 that is nothing but your omega so this omega is nothing but where the process the frequency so you have a gm by c1 which is nothing but corresponding to this so this will be the unity unity gain frequency so you can have a your filter range of this unit up to this frequency so if you want now higher bandwidth i can increase my gm or I can decrease my capacitance. So normally capacitance is nothing but parasitic capacitance at this node, what is the parasitic capacitance, that will be a minimum capacitance. So and uh, there may be some intended capacitance you can put, but GM will be nothing but now what will be the uh, transconductance of this cell. So I can, if I want large frequency, I can increase the GM. If I want very small frequency, uh, unity gain frequency, I can decrease the GM. That means, so by just by increasing or decreasing my GM's transconductance, I can uh, increase the unity gain frequency, uh, that is bandwidth. Now, uses a transconductor, realize, uh, realize an integrator. Output current is GM is ideally linearly related to the input voltage. So again, I'm saying this GM, whatever is the linearity is another issue which need to be addressed. And output and input impedance are ideally infinite. So we are saying ideally infinite, but again depends on sometimes non-ideality. That is, there can be finite input impedance and finite output impedance. Then GM is not an operational trans amplifier, which needs to be high GM value, but need to be very linear. That means whatever your GM you are saying, which is if I using as a OTA, then it required to be large. Otherwise, you can have a smaller transconduct cell. So, another important advantage of this GM uh, C filter is I can connect directly number of GMs together with a single node. So, what happens is nothing but addition of currents. So, I can have GM1, GM2, GM3. All the current will be added here to this node. So, my output voltage will be just addition of this whatever the node's voltage. 
So you'll get accordingly a simple gm1 into v1 minus gm2 into v2 and gm3 into v3 according to my whatever here connection we are doing. So it is a very simple process of adding the currents. Then another important in analog circuits is go for always differential uh, mode that is to increase the swing as well as to uh, reduce the uh, power supply rejection ratio all those things in the differential game. So we go for differential uh, uh, operation, fully differential operation, which can give you better noise and linearity than a single-ended operation. So when you go for differential, what you do is a simple, again, output, input, uh, two input, two output. And now I can connect this capacitance, uh, a simple capacitance, instead of having two capacitance, one single capacitance, which will be added, noding current will be added to these nodes. So then accordingly, I can get the equations similar to the integrator, what we are seeing is single-ended. This is a differential integrator. So advantage of this is now it will be going to be double. That is, use a single capacitor between the differential inputs. So earlier, it was required. Now you have a two currents, I0 and this minus I0. So it will be, you have a double GM. That means you have a whatever voltage means this GM. The current is going to be more, so you will have a better performance compared to the single-ended. Needs extra capacity for compensating the common mode feedback load. That means to set the common mode feedback voltage, you need a additional uh, additional uh, capacitance, which is not shown here. Now again, fully differential integrators along with the two capacitance. What here instead of a single C1, now it is uh, double because as I said, the current, whatever here it is going to be the differential double. So to have mutually cancel, you require to put two C1, that is capacitance will become almost four times. Still requires a common mode feedback, but there are compensation for the common mode feedback and applies the same grounded capacitor as used for the signal. So the whatever the grounded capacitance, you can use it and that's as a common mode feedback. Then another type, same fully differential circuit where you can have um, CP, which is normally called as parasitic capacitance because always there is analog circuit, there is a parasitic, even if you put uh, min cap capacitance, there is a parasitic capacitance exists. So to compensate that, you need that to take into account and then what will be the additional required that we can add it later. So that way you can again do this kind of uh, uh, modification so that you will have a better uh, fully differential operation. So these are the some basic cells uh, of uh, uh, GM cells which will be used for our, our next uh, these things. So I think I'll stop here. Uh, we'll continue with the next presentation after some five minutes of break.
good morning friends so today in this webinar i will try to give some glances on low power integrated continuous time conductance transconductance capacitor filters designed to be operated at low supply So welcome back friends. So first case uh, in this state case study, I would like to present before you the fourth order low pass GMC filter design, which will be from uh, the starting, we have designed the GM cell and then a fourth order low pass uh, filter has been designed using two cascade second order uh, GMC filters. And then after that we have uh, checked their uh, parasitics and then whatever the intended capacitance as per the desired frequency response and then finally uh, the layout is drawn and then the parasitics has been extracted and then uh, sent for fabrication and then chip is uh, 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 tested in PCB and then finally the results are been presented that is published. So here uh, totally uh, when you am saying complete filter design you have to uh, have GM to be GM cell to be designed and then along with the GM cell as we have seen in the beginning in the first part where we said uh, all these GM cells need to be very uh, Accuracy that means there should not be any deviation with respect to any of the variation either due to temperature or due to process corner or due to voltage variation. So to keep this uh, GM to be fixed, it is very and uh, very challenging and in order to keep this somebody has to keep uh, observing that GM has not changed. Uh, with due to any variation so we re required a second circuit which is called an additional circuit which is fixed by a circuit design uh, which will keep always the gm cell to be constant so that your accuracy whatever the free filter is going to be remain at what your design and then the third part is a uh, characterization of the chip that is uh, whatever your chip test that is uh, design has to be tested for the uh, the whatever the uh, design it has done. Now the first part is, uh, as I said, whenever you go for the higher order that is uh, based on your requirement of attenuation. So we go for, uh, we have gone for fourth order. So we have designed two second order independently. We can control and then we can go for cascade. So if you know a second order, uh, transfer function, filter uh, transfer function is nothing but it looks like this. So we have, um, which is also you can write as omega naught square divided by s square plus um, uh, two, uh, two omega naught s plus omega naught square. So I have just modified the same thing with respect to omega naught square where you are written in this form. So where we call omega naught is a full frequency and q is a quality factor. And the transfer function is realized using GMC integrator. That means I need to inter, uh, realize this in using GMC integrator. So now we have just modified this strain transfer function in the other form u 2 by V equal to this. That is just divide by omega naught by S square, uh, S whole square. You will be getting this. Now the term omega naught by S denotes the integration. That is we have seen in the previous presentation. So which is nothing but GM by C omega not equal to gm by c which is nothing but an integration so now if you put in terms of integration so i can write this equation v out equal to uh, omega not by s square into v minus this so into v out minus 1 by q into this so basically i have just modified the same equation in this form now if you see this equation there are or maximum power is two, we require two integrator. So that means two integrator of the form omega naught of s are necessary to realize a transfer function. Then the transfer function is then realized using GMC integrator, which is already explained in the previous part. Then for more general case, the integrators may be assumed to have different transfer function. 
So let us assume that two integrator which is having different uh, transfer function. This is uh, uh, frequency of operation. So omega not one by s and omega not two by s. Then if you define this way, then again omega not will be nothing but omega square root of omega not one by omega not two. So that means I can write this in terms of this form. So same equation and we write take one integrator outside and then you can simplify this. So now it can be inferred that V out is integral of the term inside the square bracket. That means this is going to be the one part. Integration of this will be nothing but V out. So I am replacing that by a small another term which is Vb. So I can write now the same equation as V out equal to Vb into omega naught by S. That means if I integrate Vb with respect to omega naught by S, then I will get V out. So a simple form that whatever equation we have discussed, I can have yeah. integration Vb, which is an integration of Vb. That means this voltage is converted into current, which is equal to Gm into Vb, and that will be pumped to the C2. So then the whatever output voltage is going to be Gm by C2 by S into Vb. So you will have a integration. So output voltage is equal to Vb by omega node 2 by S, where omega node 2 now will be nothing but Gm by C2. So you are whatever the frequency and the frequency omega naught will be defined as omega naught by C2. Same thing now other equation if you see Vb which is nothing but this form. Now Vb is an integral term inside the square bracket. That means this I can have to integrate and to get the uh, Vb. Now this equation can be realized as shown in the figure below. That means I can have omega naught 1 as Gm by C1. So if I replace this by G1 by Gm by C1, then Gm2 will be nothing but root of omega naught 2 by omega 1 divided by Q into Gm. So if you just simplify this, you can able to get this. Now with respect to that, I can have Vb realized in this form. So if you see here Vb, so I should get Vb. So this is my Vb here. So Vb is having one, two and three terms. So first term is V in. So V in, in multiply by Gm into whatever the C1 capacitance. So you have Gm by C1 here. So V in into omega naught 1 by S. That is a first term. Second term is minus V out into omega naught by naught 1 by S. So minus means I am putting here minus Gm. So V out into Gm by C1 S. And then third term is going to be minus 1 by Q into V omega naught 2 by omega naught 1 into Vb. So Vb is this itself. I will do minus part and then I will be doing the complete uh, closing the loop. So you will have a totally three currents entering into this node. So it will be 1, 2 and then 3. So with respect to this, so there is no current entering here because this is high input. High, uh, with respect to this, current entering is 0. So we'll have current coming here, this one node, and then that all the current going to this. So with respect to that, I can have a VB here equal to this. Now, if I combine this with respect to the previous, that is this part, so we'll have a VB and V out. So now I have a, a V out here and VB here. So I need another uh, GM cell here, which is connecting to the VB and V out. So that is nothing but this. So we have a VB and GM1 into V out. So I can have a simple second order transfer function implemented using GM cell. So V in, in terms of G1 and then you have a, uh, a negative GM and then you have a two back-to-back uh, -back connected GM cells. So if you simply look into this and then uh, if I say GM1, GM2 equal to GM3, uh, GM4, which is equal to Gm, I can simplify and find that omega naught is nothing but Gm by root of C1, C2. If again, if I make C1, C2 equal, then I will say Gm by C. Omega is a function of Gm and C. And Q is a function of ratio of C1 by C2. So the moment this is C1, C2 ratio, the variation with respect to Q will be mutually cancelled. Whatever the accuracy will be going to be higher. And here also, as I said, C1, C2, you have a variation with respect to this and GM. So you can adjust GM so that 
I can have a counter variation for C1 and C2. Now, another important thing, if you see here, observe, this is nothing but you are converting input voltage into a current. So you have a voltage to current converter. And then this is nothing but minus GM cell. That is, you have a resistance connected with respect to this node and then capacitance. And if you calculate the impedance looking at this node from here to here, which is nothing but a simple inductance. So you are having a simple voltage to current converter and then resistance, then C, and then you have an inductance. So which is nothing but a RLC circuit, which is also an uh, second order uh, low pass circuits. Now, with respect to the same, I can have transfer function uh, compared with the standard with respect to GM3, GM. Then I can compare each of the parameter. So accordingly, I can get what is omega naught and what is Q. So here it is going to be the, uh, say GM1, GM2, everything I made equal to see that whether it is, I'm getting the omega naught and Q, it's going to be the same as dimensionally going to be the same. So now if I have different parameters, then GM1, GM2, GM3, GM4, and C1 and C2, you will have the omega naught is going to be uh, equal to GM3 by GM4 and divided by root of C1 by C2. And Q is nothing but GM3, GM4 divided by GM square, GM2 square and uh, under square root and divided in multiply by root of C1 by C2. So it is important to note that see omega naught is now depends on GM3 and GM4. Also Q also depends on GM3 and GM4. But GM2, that Q is depends mainly on GM2, whereas GM2 is not coming in the parameter of omega naught. So I can vary my GM2 and vary the Q here. So that doesn't go into effect your omega naught. So that means independently I can vary with respect to GM2 what is my Q. So that is basically I can have uh, tuning of Q with respect to varying the GM2. And this GM3, GM4, I can vary my omega naught 2, that is my uh, frequency of the filter. So accordingly, I can have a proper choice of omega naught and Q. Now, when you go for fourth order, basically you will find omega naught and Q for individual second, or second order. And then you will have a two second orders connected in cascade. So what we do is normally, uh, if you refer uh, Sergio Franco, uh, design of operational amplifier, you will have a uh, uh, the table where it's given for one hertz low pass filter normalized for each of the uh, filters order, what will be the uh, F, uh, bandwidth and Q. So it is normalized for one hertz. So accordingly for second order, it is going to be Q is 0 0.707 and one hertz. And for third order, Q will be one. And then one and one is a second order of these things. That means you have a one second order and another one first order. Then you have a fourth order means two second order. So F naught one, and then you have F naught two and Q two. So you'll have a two Qs, Q one and Q two. So which will be fourth order filter where Q you can see it is going to be increased. So whereas the first uh, second order, it is almost like a Butterworth filter. So this, you can get this table accordingly. You can have the values of F naught and Q. So once you know this uh, omega naught and Q with respect to this, I can decide what will be the my GM and C1, C2. So uh, independently you fix this, this value. So GM3 and GM4, and then accordingly I can get the C1, C2. So, uh, so we will find the such way that in an, an integrated circuits, normally C1 will be in the range, the range of one picofarad to within 10 picofarad. So, uh, because higher than that value will be difficult to realize the capacitance. So that is why we should see that GM can be accordingly adjusted. Now, in our case, we have designed a pseudo differential transconductor that is GM cell. So now what is this differential and pseudo differential? So differential case, you have a uh, totally the output current is going to be uh, divided in two legs and then you will have a, a common current source which will take care of the shifting of the current. Whereas in case of 
pseudo differential this will be useful very uh, where where you are operating at low supply voltage where you don't have a much headroom to operate so that is if you can have a lower supply voltage then as the swing if you go for higher cascade then swing is going to be reduced so in order to have a uh, avoid this you can go for pseudo differential where there are some disadvantage and some advantage so your voltage headroom availability will be more but there are disadvantage uh, do exist now in this case we have uh, used a pseudo differential bulk driven transconductor uh, if you see simple uh, input is going to be pmos bulk so you have a vip and vim which is nothing but input uh, transistors m1 and m2 which is given to the bulk and then you have a gate of this connected with some bias voltage which is externally biased so you have a current external current idc which is made to flow with the another pmos and with the common mode voltage same as uh, input common mode voltage and then the bias uh, bias is fixed at a certain voltage where you will have a uh, this made it to operate in saturation region now with respect to this you have a input voltage is going to be fixed at common mode voltage of 0.25 and supply voltage is going to be 0.5 and this uh, output common mode also kept at uh, 0.25 so basically you are trying to see that uh, current is equally divided and any variation is uh, uh, sense data output node so we have a uh, a current source load at the bottom which is designed using nmos uh, current source load so important thing is here the common mode feedback circuit which sets this voltage see that this voltage is always going to be 0.25 so you have a common mode feedback circuit which is very very important for pseudo differential circuit and op uh, operation amplifier now advantage of as i said uh, this kind of circuit is suitable for low voltage wider common mode input range but the disadvantage is you have poor common mode gain because you have whatever the variation of the input voltage uh, or supply voltage that will be going to be reflected at the output node so you unless your common mode feedback circuit is very strong this will not be taken care so acm or adm is going to be very uh, less in this case and then poor uh, power supply rejection ratio then you have a low output impedance and need for fast and strong extra common mode feedback circuit to fix output common mode voltage and suppress common mode signals now in our case we have biased this ids by around 2 microamps and that will be giving my gmb with the 10 micro siemens with the size of around 6 into 10 that is six fingers 10 micro micro uh, meter width and then uh, length of uh, one micrometer that is six micrometer so it is uh, that configuration will give you around 10 micro siemens uh, as my gmb which is a bulk transconductance not the gate transconductance so this will be the, my uh, differential transconductor cell gm cell which will give you gmb of 10 micro siemens now important thing is this icmfb that means whenever there is any variation with respect to supply voltage at the output common mode voltage the your common mode feedback circuit should set this common mode back to 0.25 that is if let us say this increases by 0.25 to 0.27 then your vds of this going to be reduced so accordingly this current whatever the current this voltage increases means this current is going to be with respect to vds it changes so with respect to this current changes then whatever here that is there is a misbalance that means this voltage need to be sensed that means it has increased which need to be brought back to 0.25 so you should adjust that means whatever pumping uh, sinking of this current should going to be increased to set this voltage to be back to 0.25 so that means i should adjust this icmfb such that the whatever current sinking and current pumping uh, uh, sinking and pumping uh, taken from this has to be equal in the either case so you need to add a common mode feedback circuit which is going to be very crucial now a simple common mode feedback circuit we have designed is like this so we have an rr amplifier which is a simple amplifier 
uh, with the gate uh, com uh, not with the common uh, bulk driven the gate driven uh, amplifier and then you have part of the circuit which is same as our transconductance cell and here our vcm one of the node of that amplifier is uh, set as um, common mode reference voltage and then output common mode voltage is given here so any difference if this let us say this is increases this voltage increases with respect to this then output is going to reduce that is minus and accordingly output reduces means this current with respect to this to this voltage is going to be increased then current increases so this will pump more current and then that will be increasing this voltage and then this current increases and that makes this voltage to reduce so basically this is a kind of negative feedback loop which sees that at all the time output common mode remains at 0.25 so similarly if any voltage is going to be reduced here then output going to be increase here so accordingly this voltage is going to be reduced and what happens the current is going to be reduced the current reduces here means voltage at this node reduces so accordingly vgs this current going to be reduced so according the output voltage is going to be increased so basic simple a common uh, negative feedback loop sets up the uh, current uh, using an rl amplifier uh, so if you see here this is how any disturbance that is if you disturb this node voltage and and it will be brought back to the normal value within very small time so that is you are trying to disturb and then it will come back automatically using your common mode feedback circuit if your loop is not uh, converging then you can see this goes on increases and either it can reach to 0.5 volts or 0 volts so it will not settle at 0.25 so which is very very important for your common mode feedback circuit now another important thing in case of uh, continuous time or uh, on chip circuits uh, design is uh, the design centering what you call is finding out the parasitic capacitance so whatever circuit you design in cadence you need to implement the layout and then you have to finally uh, uh, send it for fabrication and physically realize in the silicon so it is very important to know what is the parasitic capacitance at the each level at the circuit level at the layout level and you need to know uh, at each node what should be the uh, capacity uh, and that addition should not be more than what is available at the node that is parasitic node so you should take care that at any node whatever capacitance added should be uh, total with respect to parasitic capacitance state space approach for model the filter now in case of state space approach what you have done is take the small signal of the filter so this is a small signal single ended small signal model of the filter you have input to given at the input gmb then at the input side you have input resistance and parasitic capacitance and then you have another gmb this will be again another another input capacitance and output capacitance so you have at the output node also capacitance and uh, uh, resistance so each node you have a capacitance output this is taken into account and you have total three nodes so accordingly you required to one is the input node and another one is another two is the intermediate nodes so now i required to have a two variables two state variable state space variable and if you calculate all the parameters with respect to this you get a b c matrix and accordingly i can get the model so if i plot the response i should get the response with respect to what is the capacitance so you have put but if you have put the capacitance as per the calculated them from the table your deviation will your response will deviate because uh, the circuit will have a additional parasitic capacitance now uh, in this, uh, so this is how for second second order. So you tune it for independently both the second orders, and then you can cascade for uh, fourth order. So what we have done is uh, this is my second order, one second order. This is another second order. You have C one, C two, C three, C four. Now you will be done doing the differential circuit so that all the second order harmonics will cancels mutually cancels, and you have. The uh, THD is going to be increases. Uh, that is total harmonic distortion. Uh, you can always have a better. And then 
Uh, another advantage is all the parasitic mutually cancels each other. If you go for uh, doing uh, exactly the similar on either length. So if you see here, um, even in the circuit diagram and layout diagram, the the layouts are drawn. Layouts are is a stick. I mean something like stick diagram where we are trying to place uh, each of these cells and connection so that the parasitic capacitance at each node seen is equally cancels, mutually cancels. So you'll have an input node, output node, and then input node, output node with respect to this. So, and then you have a parasitic uh, C1, C2, C3, C4 capacitance. So now after a design centering, that means you find what is a parasitic at each node, and then this will have a capacitance which is parasitic as well as the intended capacitance. Now your intended capacitance should be made less so that parasitic capacitance will add to that. So basically you are trying to see cap parasitic capacitance in case of design center. For that you required a model which can be taken from the MATLAB. That is your state space model, take it into MATLAB and then compare the response and uh, get the parasitic capacitance. Then once you're done, then uh, you will have a response of the frequency response uh, for the fourth order one megahertz, uh, 3 dB frequency one megahertz. And then attenuation, it is minus 20 dB per decade, which will be around 80 dB per decade, which you can see clearly from this. And you have a uh, phase response, which is around uh, uh, 180 degree for uh, two phase, that is a uh, second order. And you have a, four, a fourth order, which is going to be almost 360 degree. Uh, total phase. Now, you, once you have a, this uh, this ideal as well as transistor level filter, we have compared and it is almost matching with respect to uh, uh, filter design schematic and the, the layout part. Now, fi finally, if you see fourth order GMC filter, we have just done the variation with respect to process, temperature, and then supply voltage, which is call it as a PVT, which is very, very important for any integrated chip design. So we have, normally we consider 10% change in supply voltage from its nominal value, that is 0.95 in our supply nominal value, so 0 0.45 to 0 0.55. So when it's uh, sitting, that side is 20 so to 70 degree critical corner, and normal supply voltage is 0 0.5. So we have done for uh, temperature uh, corner variation. This you can do using the mat uh, cadence where you go for uh, the library, uh, in library where you have a different corners. Basically, you have oxide thickness changes and mobility changes with respect to uh, different corner uh, for PMOS as well as uh, NMOS. So basically, slow, slow, and you say slow NMOS, slow PMOS like that. So uh, where there in some of the cases it can be mutually cancels and we will get a variation with respect to this. If the variation is too large, then we need to some additional circuits to be uh, uh, added to the uh, main circuit. Now to have minimum variation, as I said, you should see that because the variation is more in case of GM, whereas it will be less in case of capacitance and we don't have any resistance, so that is also is going to be the added advantage. But GM variation is more, you need to fix this GM because unless you uh, uh, see that GM is not, a GM is uh, fixed, we will not be getting the response which is going to be uh, 1 megahertz uh, 3 dB bandwidth. Now, one of the important that I said, why fix transconduct? Because filter bandwidth depends on transconductance and capacitance, GM by C. So capacitance variation is assumed to be very less, so you can always consider to be very small. Then transconductance could change over 30%. So that means you have a plus or minus 30% transconductance change, which can lead to a huge change in the bandwidth. So in order this, that is why we need to tackle this issue. You require to have a fixed GM bias circuit. So when you have a lower voltage at room, prevents use of cascode structure. That is, since uh, we are working 0 0.4, 0 0.5, we cannot go for cascode structure. And also short channel device when operated in low voltage do not behave as a square lock. That means we are having a small uh, channel, means our channel length of the devices are considered to be small. Then small variation supply voltage causes large variation transconductance due to low potential. 
that means your transconductance itself is very small so very small variation will give you large variation and as the voltage scales mobility degrees due to increased substrate doping resulting in corner variation so because there is a mobility degradation with respect to electric field so definitely when the voltage scales down electric field changes so there will be doping variation so that results in corner variation then changing wafer size from 300 mm to 450 mm affects the corner variation because corner when you say there is a threshold built vth variation so that will be more when you go for higher wafer size that is diameter wafer size so normally uh, to reduce the uh, cost of the chip we go for higher uh, wafer size so that um, mass production or bulk production reduces the uh, cost of the chip now there are some certain uh, circuits which are available in the uh, literature which are used and it was found that the variation is going to be more so we are not able to use that so this is what is that so we have a two circuits which are already in the uh, this things literature which we have used and found that the variation is going to be more and the reason for that also we have addressed so i think i'll not deal much with this just for the completion of the uh, design we have to tell this so you can if you are anyone interested you can always contact us or contact me so that we can guide you so in this case we have seen that it is going to be more the variation is going to be more so this is what is uh, the variation is kind point to be around plus or minus 13.6 and variation here also it is going to be large so gate as well as bulk with respect to temperature and same thing with respect to gate and bulk with respect to vdd uh, also going to be more which is around 15% now in order to fix this we require to see that where is the exactly the problem so it is we have found that gm when i am saying gm so the variation with this if you see gm equation it is mu pc of w by l id so this is since it is a ratio of w by l the variation is going to be mutually cancels the main uh, two other parameters are mu p and c ox mu p is nothing but mobility so this mobility degradation is also one of the important parameter and c c ox depends on <coughs> the thickness of the oxide so which is also an important parameter so if you see the variation of gm will be uh, with the nominal value which depends on this that is uh, mobility variation as well as thickness variation oxide thickness variation so that we need to find out how much this variation is going to be with respect to this so there is some certain uh, analysis we made with respect to mobility uh, variation with respect to different temperature and we have found that how much exactly the this things so maximum variation will be around minus 3% and plus 3% and similarly tox and normal with respect to that it is around 3% that is minus 2.0 to 2.75% change in gm so this is just analysis we made so i think uh, i will just uh, will not go into more details and then we found that uh, there is this whatever proposed will not be able to fit so we need uh, some circuits so an additional circuit is proposed here what we have done is a simple approach where we have op amp and then we have tried to see that this an external resistance which is off chip resistor which can be placed in the pcb and then if i able to fix this voltage at v reference let us say 0.25 by using an op amp and then i can control this resistance if i fix fix then i can control what is the current so that means i can have a constant current if i able to fix this voltage and divide by this resistance will give you a constant current so simple approach is used here so any variation will be able to take care here and now i can use this current i can extend this vg whatever voltage to my uh, transconductor which is designed already in the previous so a simple approach is used and it is working very well and it is found that variation is very very less so what we have done is here taking this into this and there are another issue which was coming because we have a p mos here it was n mos here so but luckily what happens here there is a degree, whatever difference in the vds voltage and that will be mutually uh, uh, cancels here also because finally this voltage when it comes here also going to add that additional effect so this uh, takes care of my fixed current 
and it is found that voltage whatever variation is very less which is within 10 percent so there are two approaches we proposed i think i will not go into much details with respect to this so you can always uh, refer back so if you see so you cannot test just like connecting any of the equipment since it is output is 0.5 volts and input also 0.5 volts we need additional circuitry to test uh, our output voltage so we cannot test as a standalone filter so what we have done is uh, we have a test buffers so which will be operating at 1.8 volts so you have a gmc filter and then you have a differential signal generated using uh, transformer so then uh, this test buffers test one and two are used because 1.8 so that this will not be loading on this filter so because and any, any additional can load connected should not make this load to this filter then your characteristics will change so accordingly you require a test buffer so there are two test buffers and then to convert single ended output to uh, differential output to single ended we have again output transformer and then there is a 50 ohm resistance to match the impedance at the output uh, to the measurement now in this an important thing is we can see there are two test buffers so why we need test buffer is uh, two test buffer and two paths is nothing but if you see here uh, the transfer function of this one is direct path where vi input is and hn is a pin uh, with the filter in a transfer function and this is a test buffer transfer function and similarly this now if i want my transfer function of this then what i'll get is this transfer function into this transfer function assuming that both are independent then if i divide this two transfer function by this then i'll get my gmc filter transfer function so that is what exactly we did here so we are used uh, to calculate the transfer function actor network analyzer and uh, s parameters are analyzed at the two outputs so one is direct path another is a filter path so from the direct path whatever you get the transfer function and then filter path here if you divide then you will get the, the filter transfer function so you used to measure s parameter of the filter path and direct path so if you see this is the layout of the filter so there are two filters actually in this uh, circuit one is active rc filter one of my colleagues uh, we are doing phd together and another one is uh, my gmc filter so you can see this is my gmc filter and there is a test buffer here and then test buffer here and then you have a input uh, output pads i what you call it as io pad which is again used at 1.8 and here also we have input output pads io pads and these are some of the fillings uh, because you need to see that all the metals different metals uh, ratios are going to be same so accordingly you can see this is my filter and for additional circuit we have a fixed gm circuit we have a test buffer circuit all those these are additional circuit which is required to be operate uh, make this filter to be work properly and additionally there is a, another circuit and there, there is one more circuit is called voltage regulator which is also a, an mtech project so this whole uh, chip is designed in the area of 1525 that is 1525 mm into 1525 mm uh, using uh, uh, tmc technology uh, umc technology sorry and it is uh, fabricated uh, and and we have tested that is after fabrication and this is a jlcc package uh, that is 44 pin package so it is very important that as you have seen in the previous that layout here also when you go for connection you should see that both differential inputs see the same capacitance and same path so it should be having the same distance so and the input should be also have the same either side seeing the same uh, signals so it is very very important parameter need to be taken and because otherwise your capacitance will change for the uh, either of the nodes and then your transfer function changes so here also you should uh, always take this is the chip and then you have a io pads uh, sorry package lcc package this connected here and here also the connection should be such that your input and outputs are together and seeing the same capacitance and then if you see this is the pcb which is designed again 
using ARCAD and then printed circuit board and then finally PCB has been fabricated with a two layer PCB and then you have uh, all the discrete components uh, which need to be is required for testing. So you have a transformers here. So we have a three transformers for differential signal conversion and all these blue colors are the port that is resistor and then capacitance and then your BNC connector for testing the output. So you have an input filter input and then direct path output and filter output. So this uh, will take care that you are seeing all the other side going to be the same. So we are, uh, our PCB was uh, around 4.4 inch by 4.125 inch with the power supply connectors. So we have 0.25 power supply, 0.55 power supply, 0.5 volts power supply, which is connected to this. Um, so this is a PCB which is uh, uh, designed for testing the chip. And this is the response of the chip with respect to vector network analyzer. You have an ideal response and then what is the measured response. So there is a small deviation at the 3 dB. But other and less otherwise that's the remaining part is fine. You will get attenuation of the same. And this is a total we have received 20 chip. Out of that we have uh, results is almost same. Mm, so and this is a response, uh, noise response that is we call noise spectral density, which is also measured using uh, vector network analyzer. And now the results are tabulated. This is a fabricated results where 0.5 volts, 0.18 technology, micrometer technology, one megahertz, and power dissipation 56.54 microwatts, and then integrated noise, and then dynamic range, which is very very important. Normally, this is very less uh, comparative to active RC. It is going to be less, but uh, with respect to area, also it is going to be good. Now, we have compared this with the literature, what is available. So one of the main paper we targeted was this sixth paper, which is uh, again 0.5 volts uh, and all other almost a little bit higher voltage. Um, so we found that this is having uh, better results compared to this uh, first paper. And one of the important parameter used for uh, measuring the, comparing the performance is uh, called as figure of merit, which is power dissipation divided by P, Q, max, F0, and then dynamic range square, which is called uh, power per pole. What is the power per pole? So almost this FOM tells that per pole, this much power is going to be dissipated. So P will be taking care number of uh, uh, the number of poles, or you can say order of the filter, or Q is a quality factor of the filter, and F0 is a maximum dB bandwidth, and then DR is a dynamic range square. So this will take care of your comparison that is of even though this is of different voltage, uh, different uh, uh, frequency and different dynamic range, your FOM will say that uh, whichever having lesser FOM will be better uh, or more efficiency, power efficiency. So ours is, which is around 44% 40 energy reduction compared to the sixth paper. And these are some of the references uh, which we have used. In the second part, I said this was our one of the MTech students' work, which is a continued from whatever that is, which is anything but again uh, using 0.5 low power OTC low pass filter design for ECG. So we have uh, low power operation trans capacitance multiplier, which is the additional things and the architecture results and conclusions. Now, the cutoff frequency filter is determined RC time constant. So that means omega C will be nothing but GM by C. In below 180 nanometer technology, capacitance should be in 1 picofarad to 10 picofarad, which I already explained. So this is normally the sum of the benchmark. Then for biomedical application, the cutoff frequency will be in the range of 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz for ECG to the field. So if you see this uh, frequency range, then at 250 hertz with one picofarad load capacitance, GM should be around 1.6 nanosecond, which is very, very low. Now that means GM cell should be of 1.6. So if I am able to manage this, then I can get one picofarad because as long as capacitance, if you get make small, your area will be less. Okay, so that is why we need to have a very small capacitance. And so that this can be 1.6 uh, GM can be adjusted. So 
we have proposed a transconductance cell which is uh, similar to that uh, one of the uh, Shanti Pawan cells paper. If you see, this is a transconductance cell where it is working at 0.5 volts and we have calculated differential gain at uh, 1 and 2 because it's a cascode uh, uh, connection. You have a two stages. And then if you see the operation, T forward bias and uh, power will reduce drastically with reducing power supply and the internals provided to stabilize the common mode. The amplifier is very less compared to the gear driven. It is, so since your bulk is very, bulk transconductance is small, so obviously gain will be small. Then uh, the limitation of this 40 minimum GM value is possible is 29 nanoseconds. So what we are required is 1.6, but now it is, we have come up with a 20 nanosecond. Then for biomedical application, as we said, it should be range of two nanosecond. Then small GM current should be very low. So then that means for the small uh, reducing current, you require the length to be small, then frequency reduction method, then GM reduction. That means either you can go for reducing the capacitance or uh, increasing the capacitance or reducing the transconductance. So one may is GM reduction or the capacitance increasing. So in this, we have proposed capacitance increase. What we have done is a simple, uh, so you can refer this paper. Uh, so it is a continuous time filter 0.1 hertz to 2 gigahertz. In this, so it is called as capacitance multiplier. So if you see basic equation I in equal to IC, whatever current flow in the capacitor is SC into V, which is same here also. But if you see that there is a small change with respect to more current is drawn at this node, which is a multiplying by some IC, whatever here. So if you can see the capacitance at this node, what you get is IC is equal to this. And now capacitance will be one plus N times V. That means in this case and this case, the capacitance multiplied by N times. So simply using the same capacitance, just by using a current source, so I can able to increase the capacitance so there is some drawback, but, but still I'm able to manage. That is, we can be able to manage. So simple circuit is used in the literature is this, where I can use a simple current source and current sinks to get the capacitance. And if you see the ideal capacitance and scaled capacitance, the simulation is this. You can refer this paper for this detail. And this normally N is equal to 19. And this can be this can can be done for uh, not very low value of n and very large value of n, so some moderate value of n. So again, the same RLC circuit is used here. So I have converted this voltage into resistance, uh, voltage source into current source with the resistance parallel. So I L and C. So this same is implemented here. It's, uh, whatever the proposed in the previous, so we have a voltage current conversion grounded resistor and then grounded inductor, which is back-to-back -back connected GM cell. So this is a fourth order filter where omega naught is this, and this result of uh, GM cell, your tablet with GM cell and response, frequency response and case response. And if you see, this is 180 uh, technology and 0.5, and frequency is what you get is in the gain bandwidth the kilohertz is 3.183. And if you compare this here, it's the capacitor multiplier and without capacitor multiplier in the case response. So this you are you are seeing in a very large scale, so you will not able to see the difference much, but there is small difference which you can always highlight. And this is the comparison. Uh, so you have a FOM which is almost again more compared to the other similar work that is uh, with respect to 0.5 or different voltage levels. This is a reference with respect to this paper. So, finally, I thank you. So, any of the questions we will highly back to online. Thank you. So, thank you for your patience. If any anything you want, you can always contact us. We will be there to help you or for your any of the difficulties. Thank you for giving opportunity to present before you. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Yeah. So uh, sorry for the delay, and uh, I'm uh, extremely sorry. Uh, the speaker for today's session is has another meeting to attend urgently, so he won't be able to answer your questions right now. So we will we have seen uh, the YouTube, uh, live chat of YouTube. So we'll take up those questions with sir. We we'll forward his uh, uh, forward the questions to Vasan sir. Or if you if you, you can mail it him, we'll also mail it to him at vasanth.mh@nitgov.ac.in, and we will get back to you with your answers.